the cool things, I mean, and this is just, like, this makes me so excited. Mm -hmm. um, you, you are making a living right now doing what you love. Mm -hmm. Doing what you love. She's always been creative, and we tried to figure out, you know, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So she took the sewing lessons, and she took the art lessons, and she did the photography. So she's a full-time photographer. Her and her husband together. That is their livelihood. Um, and I just want to talk for a second um, about what it looks like to, to, A, do what you love for a living. Like, how does somebody... Because when you have people going, I don't have my job, I don't, you know, how to, what are the first steps towards doing something that you love for a living, but even in the fringe hours, uh, my friend Jessica Turner has a great book by that title about making room for the things that you love in moments when you, your whole life is sucked up by being a mother or going to work, but just, you have made, you, you figured out at a young age how to live your life doing what you love. And, I, you know, what do you tell somebody who wants to do the same thing career or even in the fringe hours of their of their day? Wow. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think has helped you, yeah. you to do um, that? I think, well, initially starting off, I think I was just blessed in that Josh was really welcoming and wanted me to do what I loved. So for a long time, he went to work so that I could do photography. And even though that wasn't the main source of income at the time, um, just so that I could do what I love and explore like what I love to do and so um, it was just a blessing that he was able to come home as well from his corporate job and for us to do that together um, but I would say you know owning a business is hard mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like even though it is something that we really love to do it's also we put a lot of hard work into it so Doing something that you love isn't necessarily like always, oh, this is easy and like, it just version, came in and it's kind of faded over something you just said at the beginning. You were doing it even when it wasn't making money. Yeah. See, and I think that's, that's what a lot of people just want to have a business that's doing yeah. this. And it's oh. like, you no, know, you have to be doing it even just because mm -hmm. it's what fills you up yeah. before it's what's putting food and bread on the table and all that right. stuff. Right. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And when we were in college and Josh started the business, he was doing three hour long graduation sessions for $25 and editing oh, wow. 200 pictures for people. before y'all even were yeah, before we were he was doing what he loved. He was doing what he loved on his money. own. And yeah. so when we met and got together and I kind of brought in what I knew and liked and posing and all this and we kind of combined and did it together, it was very much so, a, I don't know, a, a union of like two people having their passions and it coming together. Okay. Um, and it just turning out to be this really cool thing, but also coupled with a lot of hard work yeah. and not that much money and, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Sounds like Chip and Joanna. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that you wanted to be in ministry. So when you guys met each other, mm -hmm. you were operating um, in what you want, in your passion. You were operating under what you had already decided yes. you were aiming towards. And you, you brought those two things together, yeah. yes. which I think is an interesting point when you're doing what you love in marriage. Yeah. That, you know, it's a, it's a unique situation to, to be able to do that and right. center on that same, that same passion. But you were doing you before he got there. Right. <laughs> and continue to do me and him it takes a lot of, like you said, work, balance, a lot of communication, so you're growing together mm -hmm. and not bypassing each other because you're both driven, you're both called, and you both have passion for it. So all I can say, it takes a lot of, again, a lot of communication, and there were certain seasons in life where I helped your dad start the church, but from the home, because mm -hmm. you all were young, mm -hmm. and you wanted something, in those days you had to crank the bulletin out with your arm. <laughs> not, not, the what? bulletin? The machine. It's a machine that you have to roll the bulletin For printing? Out. For printing. What? What? Right. I think we've heard this See, story. This knows <laughs> nothing about but So you had to do one at a time? At, that was done from home. Because you bought the... What? You bought the... <laughs> We're right. just like... You bought the bulletin, if I'm making any sense, ready. Picture so everything. One. So I would choose a bulletin. Because oh, it was like a template. template. Uh, and then you would type out. Christian bookstores sold everything. Yeah. I remember that. I come, I right. Remember that. So okay. you bought the bulletin picture and all, choose it. So I bought it for the whole year, but depending on seasons and things like that. Yes, and then I would talk to you dad and type the whole bulletin out, and then I forgot the name of the machine. You run it off. Oh my God. And now, so I would why stand did you guys there. Feel you need a bulletin? It was like 
You're talking about 15 or 20 people, right? No, the church was growing by then. Okay. By, by then. We felt like we so. needed a bulletin. And, you know, I probably did it in the kitchen table right here in this beautiful home. Wow. You know. Um, but it was us working together and working in the season of life I was in. I had kids, so I couldn't go to the office per se. Yeah. But the office came here. Huh. But we're still doing ministry together. Yeah. Hmm. So, what do you wow. write about? What about you, Priscilla, on passion? What is somebody, if they want to do it, yeah. launch out in something that is related to their, their, their income for their home? Or just, I just love to do this, and how do I, how do I do I, it? I really just think, um, I love that term, the fringe hours, because I really think those are the moments that you have to capitalize on. You have to find where those are, where you probably, probably have them. You're just not seeing them as opportunities. Right. And um, do what you love in those moments. Because I, I think one of the greatest sort of, I guess, discoveries or revelations I've had here in the 40s is that there were some things I was doing in my 20s and my 30s in those fringe hours that are the foundation for things in my 40s that I did not know were going to happen. Mm -hmm. So if there were little classes I was taking or little books I was reading or notes I was making or journal entries I was inputting or blog I would write, I can't tell you how many little blog posts or how many little jewelry box articles, we have this section on our website called the jewelry box, yeah. how many little articles really were either a chapter in a book mm. that I was gonna write, right. or, or I was just losing momentum on a chapter and I would go and see an article I wrote 10 years earlier, mm -hmm. and it was the framework for this chapter. Right. And so it was because, same thing with my mom, she was journaling a lot mm -hmm. or right. little, and then that really became the framework for her first book. Um, so it's like I was just writing little bits and pieces here and there, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, that's actually going to be a book right, here. Right. So if you capitalize and use the fringe hours as opportunities to just yeah. little, little snippets of what you love, you have no idea how that actually is going to be the fuel yeah. for something mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you're already providing for yourself and you don't even know it. Right. Yeah. I think that's encouraging just to even flip that totally on its head. I think that's encouraging um, as a parent because as you're talking, I'm thinking about, that with me with raising Karis, that there were so many things. I was just trying stuff. She yeah. was just like, I know she's creative. I wasn't trying to make a career. I was just like, she likes to draw, so take a class. Yeah. She's interested in sewing, so let me find yeah. somebody who can teach you to do that. There was a class at photogra on photography at yeah. the co-op, and I was like, well, I have a camera, so we'll. Yeah. I mean, I was just, tr you're making these small deposits. Right. In the That's life good. of your kids, you said small, small deposits just whoa. to expose them because you never know what can hit yeah. you later or what you can use later. So yeah. sometimes I think if we don't go all the way from zero to sixty in a thing, mm. we think it can't be used. Yeah. But these little deposits um, later on, well, the beauty is that God knows exactly how to integrate these different things right. and these different experiences. And we just have to be faithful to make the deposits, right. okay, you know, for ourselves or for our, for our kids. I love. I love that. Yeah, okay. I like to look, you said small, small deposits, de small deposits, we don't live in a generation, we talked about that earlier today, mm -hmm. we don't live in a generation that's used to small deposits, we want answers now, we want everything mm -hmm. now, we want full deposits, we want 100% return, <laughs> and, and we serve a God that deals in seasons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and read Ecclesiastes, that's just the way it is, so we have an old fashioned God. <laughs> that's still in control, yeah. and he does things in small deposits. Yeah. And we need to learn also how to compare ourselves with each other. We all have a different path, yeah. a different plan, by the same old fashioned path.